Welcome back, people. Still to come, our man Young Sid is here at the Fale. Yakas. Oh. And I check out the extremely physical craft of stone masonry. But right now, come with me to meet a true princess of the Pacific. Oh, stop it. <laughs> you stop it. Western world, the sight of a man wearing lipstick and acting as a woman would cause heads to spin, but not in the Pacific, as there is a respect for what we know as fafafine. But what does it mean to be a fafafine? Let's find out. Hey. Everybody meet my dear friend Felicia, a whafafine and advocate for the transgender community. Now sis, what are we doing here today? Well, I'm out here in South Auckland working with a young transgender group um, and I thought I'd come out here and get some food because what other better way to compliment sharing but with food and conversations. Is that a major part of your role to support those in the transgender community? Because of who I am um, and how I identify, people pretty much ask me to come out and speak openly and honestly about what it is to be fafafingi. Now you have a strong sense of identity and way of seeing the world. How do you think the world sees you? Everybody has a different interpretation of who I am as an individual. I've always been true to, one, to myself. Um, so I think it's something that's helped me along to overcome negativity. So you did face negativity growing up as a whawhawhingi? Absolutely. And it still happens today. Misinterpretations of who I am. I'm a sex worker, I'm a druggie, I'm a thief. Um, I'm a man who dresses, who, who wears women's clothing. So many different misinterpretations, but a lot of those negative stereotypes were created because they had no idea of who really or what really is a whawhawhingi or a transgender person. So a whawhawhingi is not a man who dresses as a woman? Every whawhawhingi has a different perception. For me, first and foremost, I don't identify as a man. I don't identify as a woman. I identify as who I am and who I know to be, and that is a human being. Is that a space in between a man and a woman? That's for you to decide. But for me, I just, I live my life just the way I am because that's how I know how to be. So today's about a better understanding for our youth, for me, and for our audience. Indeed. Okay, let's go. Do our people, Pacific people, have a special understanding of the world of whawhawhingi? Yeah, I think they do. I think the view of whawhawhingi is they are individuals who identify as predominantly more so being female and functioning in those roles, but also having the roles of male roles as well. We are family members, we are friends, we are engaged in community, but there are always two sides to the story and whether it be positive and negative, there is still a strong understanding of what it is to be Fafafing, what it is to be Samoan, and um, what it is to be in the Pacific. But is there an acceptance of being Fafafing in the Polynesian community? It's one thing to be tolerated because you function in society as being a cook, as being part of the choir, as being a caregiver, but to be accepted is something that is still not received by Fafafing so wouldn't it have been easier for you, if you were biologically born a man, to just live as a man? Well, I guess for a man, yeah. I don't know what it is to be a man because that's not how I, I've lived my life. But it also places it back on society, on the expectations they place on people to be so-called normal. Being transgendered in New Zealand is still on the mental illness bill. It, you're, deemed as being somebody who has a medical condition or a medical illness, which for me, I have no relation to that whatsoever. Well, I'd love to find out more about you and what you do. Sure, well, come on, let's go. <laughs> Girls, come on through. Hi. 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 <laughs> They're all a part of this um, newly formed group, which is formed by them, called INE. Um, INE stands for Identity, Nurture and Empowering, Empowerment. Tara, what do you get as being part of this group? I get to help other transgender people like myself in schools who are struggling, because I was pretty much the only one that was in my school, so it was kind of hard, I had no support. 
Michelle, why do you think a group like this is important for Fafa Fingi trying to assert their identity? A lot of the time, we don't have a voice. Um, there's very few people that are out in the media um, portraying us as people. We get the chance to say to educators and providers, look, this is what we need to be people first and foremost, and this is what we need to be unique people. Michelle, what does your future look like? I would really like to be a university lecturer. I think it would be really cool to just put um, myself out there and just be a voice for our people. And Felicia, do you have a picture for your future and what you'd like it to be? A future with no stigma, no discrimination, no harm, no prejudice, no judgmental people on a personal level. I'd like to see these young ones do really, really good for themselves and become who they aspire to be. Oh, oh, thank you so much for being with us today and thank you to the girls here for giving us all a better understanding of what it means to be Papa Finge in New Zealand. Thanks again. Thank you. Bye. 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 On Pacific Beach Tree. On Pacific Beach Tree. It's prize time! And if you want to be in to win this Young Sid CD and this Pacific Beat Street t-shirt, just download a clip to YouTube, post us its link of you or your mates giving us your best version of Pacific Beat Street's theme song. We'll choose the best and show it right here. After the break, Mike checks out stonemasonry and I catch up with Young Sid yeah. on Pacific Beat Street. Woo! Yes. Pacific Beat Street.